Hi everyone, my name is Nicholas Yeo and I'm currently a core anesthetic trainee in a Glasgow Royal Infirmary in Scotland. And in today's video, we're gonna have a sneak peek into some of the emergency drugs that I use in my day-to-day -day work life. So just to let you guys know, I'm only nine months into my training, so I'm not here to give any professional advice, but rather some insights into what these medications are and how we use it. And I hope that this video will be informative and helpful in helping you expand your knowledge in what we do as anesthetists. If not, let's get right into it. Now, whenever you're asleep for your surgery, we are always keeping a close eye out for your vital signs such as your heart rate and your blood pressure. And this is because depending on the type of surgery, or the type of medications that we give, sometimes your blood pressure or your heart rate can drop down to dangerously low levels. And this is why we need a set of emergency drugs at our arm's reach to be able to correct those levels to maintain cardiovascular stability. Now the four drugs that we'll be discussing today will be atropine and glycopyronium, labelled in green, and ephedrine and metaraminol, which are labelled in purple. These drugs are color-coded for easy visual recognition. Now, labeling these medications are extremely important. As you can see, all of them are colorless fluids, so we won't want to be administering the wrong medication to the wrong patients, and this is why we need to keep our due diligence in preparing these medications. Now, let's start off by talking about atropine and glycopyronium. Atropine comes in a 600 micrograms per one mu vial, as you can see here, or it can also be found in a mini jet as you can see here, one milligram and five mils. Whereas glycopyronium comes in a 200 micrograms in one mil vial, as you can see here, or it also comes in a 600 microgram in three mil vial, as you can see here. So these drugs fall under the class of what we call anticholinergics, and what they do is they competitively blocks your muscarinic acetylcholinic receptors, and it leads to increased firing of electrical signals in your heart, and increasing your heart rate. Now you can imagine this like driving a car where your speed is being limited by your gearbox. So administering this medication is like switching up a gear so that your car can drive even faster. Now the main difference between atropine and glycopyronium is that atropine can cross the blood-brain barrier into your brain or also through the placenta to the baby and what it can cause is sedation, restlessness, or even hallucinations and delirium, especially in the elderly population. Now, surgeries that I pay particularly closer attention to in terms of patients' heart rate are young, healthy females undergoing surgeries such as hysteroscopies or laparoscopic surgery. And this is because stimulation of the cervix and also insufflation of the abdomen can sometimes cause huge vagal response, which leads to a huge drop in heart rate. And this is when we give some of these medications to crank up the gears to speed up the heart rate again. Next, let's talk about metaraminol and ephedrine. As atropine and glycopyronium increases your heart rate, ephedrine and metaraminol works primarily on increasing your blood pressure. So these drugs fall under the class called sympathomimetics, and what they do is that they act on your alpha and beta receptors in your body to boost your blood pressure. So let's start off by talking about metaraminol. Metaraminol comes in a 10 mg to 1 mu vial, as you can see here. And what we would normally do is we would dilute it with 0.9% saline up to 20 ml in a 20 ml syringe, and we would then decant it into a 5 ml syringe. We only give boluses of 1 ml at a time, which is 0.5 mg and then reassess the patients to see if the blood pressure has risen to adequate levels. Now, the easiest way to understand how metaraminol works is that if you can imagine yourself drinking your favorite drink through a straw and how to switch that straw to a much smaller one, you realize that it requires even more effort to sip the same drink. Now, it's similar when we give metaraminol. What it does is that it squeezes the blood vessels from big to much smaller, so the blood pressure increases because it needs more effort to push the same amount of blood in a really, really tiny vessel. Now, a commonly seen phenomenon when giving metaraminol is that we will see a reflex bradycardia in some of our patients. This is because metaraminol works mostly on alpha receptors. So squeezing in your blood vessels and increasing your blood pressure, the body senses this and in turn decreases your heart rate to compensate. So sometimes we need to think twice when giving patients metaraminol, especially when the heart rate is low because it could bring it down even lower. And lastly, let's talk about ephedrine. Ephedrine comes in a 30 milligrams in one mil vial. And what we do is we dilute it up in 10 mils. So we give 
two mils at a time, which is six milligrams at a time before rechecking blood pressure. Now, the main difference between ephedrine and metaraminol is that ephedrine also has a significant better effect. So in clinical terms, ephedrine not only increases your blood pressure, it also increases your heart rate and also the force of contraction in your heart. Now, it might seem that ephedrine might be better than metaraminol just because it has both alpha and beta effects. However, it also comes at a price because increasing your heart rate and increasing your heart contractility also puts further strain in your heart. And we don't really want that, especially in vulnerable elderly patients with cardiovascular diseases. So we also have to think twice when giving ephedrine in these groups of patients. So there we go. A quick snapshot on some of the emergency medications that we use during anesthesia to keep our patients safe during surgery. If you like what I do, please give a like and subscribe. If not, I'll see you in another video. Thank you. See you.